All right, guys, happy 2022. And it might be freezing outside, but it's nice and warm in here in the simulator. So we're gonna take some cuts. I'm gonna take you through my what's in the bag. We've got a brand new toy, the Flightscope Mevo Plus. We're gonna give you my stock yardages for everything in the bag. And the reason why I'm really looking forward to this is because this is, without a doubt, the best setup I've ever had. And I'll tell you why as I walk you through each thing. So you ready? Let's hop into it. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start at the bottom. We're gonna take you through the Vokey SM8 wedges. I love these wedges. Currently, I have a 60 degree, a 52 degree, and a 48 degree. Uh, we dialed in the grind, the bounce, everything like that in a recent fitting we did with Kevin Sprecher. But believe it or not, since we've made so many changes over the past 12 months, those are actually some of the oldest clubs in my bag right now. I've had those for two full seasons now. Absolutely love them. They're the most versatile clubs in my bag. So let's start right off the bat with the 60 degree. We're gonna hit this one right here. One thing I will tell you with the 60 degree is it's very rare that I take a full swing shot with this club. So this is my club for getting out of all types of trouble around the green. Anything from green side bunkers to chipping out of the deep rough, this is my go-to club. I've even had it stamped with up and down just to remind me what my goal is most of the time with this club. But if I ever do need it for a full swing, I can usually get something like 60, 70 yards out of it. It's not often, but I'll show you what I mean. Okay, Ready. so what I say there, about a 70 yard shot, it's about all that I can ever get out of this, but most of the time it's gonna be less than a full swing. But this is one thing that I love with these Vokies is the amount of spin I get, almost 10,000 RPM there. That for me is solid. You know, I don't play a high spin game, um, so I'm really happy with that. Usually I'll get this ball way up in the air and that'll stop it. But again, anything green side, I just, it's been a super stroke saver for me on those green side bunkers. All right, next club in the bag is my 52. It's one of my highest used clubs because I will use this all in all types of shots from 100 yards and in. I can get about 100 yards out of it, and that's why originally I put this in the bag. I did have a 56, I re-gapped it because at 56 I didn't have anything for a 100 yard shot, which is something that I was facing pretty often. So I put this in the bag for that reason, but I also do use this for countless other things. I love to chip with it, I love a little half swing. Like if I was faced with a 70 yard shot, I'd rather take a three quarter swing with this than try to stretch the 60 degree there. So this is my go-to club here. So there you go, 98 yards, right, right about what I was thinking. And again, the spin, 9,100 RPM, plenty of stopping power out of this club. So just, this is one of those ones, super confident in it, gotta have it, it's like my go-to club. So the stealing club challenges, Mike knows to take this away from me, that's for sure. Okay, and the last of my Vokey SM8s is gonna be my 48 degree. So I put this in the bag because it perfectly gapped between the pitching wedge that comes with the T200s, which we'll talk about in a second. And I had the prior generation of the T200s previous to this, so no need to regap. That's a 43 degree. So I put the 48 in, I like where that puts me, right between that 43 and that 52. I'll use this a lot, short par threes, things like that. Anywhere I need to get around 115 yards, this is my club. Also, if I want to chip and have a little bit of a lower trajectory, I'll often pull this club. But again, super versatile, and that is why I love the wedge setup that I have, multiple uses. So there you go, 110. So previously, like I said, I didn't have anything in that range because my pitching wedge will hit in a moment. That's my 125 club. Okay, so this is the big change over the past couple months was upgrading my entire iron set to the new second generation T200s. And a lot of you have DM'd me and asked how I like them versus the previous generation because I was hitting the previous generation really well. Where I feel like I'm getting a little bit more here is in two areas. The first one is I love 
the turf interaction on these clubs. The other thing I love about these clubs is just the forgiveness in general. I cannot tell you how many times I've missed hit here and there. I'm gonna, it happens, I'm an 11 handicap. You're gonna have missed hits. The difference is I'm still able to score. I'm still remembering just a couple of months ago, we were playing a skins match at Black Bear and the seventh hole is a challenging par three over water. I totally miss hit this. I missed the sweet spot by more than you can imagine, yet it's still found the green. It wasn't a pretty ball flight, but it still found the green. I got out of there with a par. So even when I don't hit it and catch it quite right, I'm still getting at least a predictable amount of distance and dispersion out of these clubs, which is what I love so much about them. So starting with that pitching wedge, let's hit that now. Like I said, we're gonna run through, give you all the stock yardages. Also wanna mention that similar to my last setup, I went with the Project XLZ, the 115 gram shafts. I find if something works, stick with it. And that's one more thing we'll talk about in a moment about uniformity through this bag, the shafts. And when we get into the woods, you'll know exactly what I mean. That's it, so that's what I'm looking for out of this club. Anywhere from that 125 range, maybe a little bit more here. Um, but a big thing too we did, and if you haven't checked out the fitting video where we dialed these in, definitely go back and give it a look. We work with Andy Inman, and one big area of concentration for us was that landing angle. So what we found is that with the new T200s, I'm able to get the ball up a little bit higher. It gives me a little bit more of a steeper landing angle. I'm able to attack more front pins. And this is something that opened my eyes. I hadn't even really thought of this until working with Andy, and that's what working with a good fitter will do. But when you've got that front pin location that you need to access in some of those trickier clubs, it's nice to know that you can do it by getting that angle of attack a little bit steeper and being able to hit that front green and hold it. And that's what we're doing. We got a carry distance of 127.9, uh, a total distance of 127.6. So it stopped and came back just a bit. So we'll run through the rest of these pretty quick just to give you some numbers. Uh, obviously that can change, vary depending on all types of weather conditions. And we're indoors here, we've got that luxury. But nine iron, this is usually my 135 club. Again, probably get another yard or two out of them from being indoors, but that's right where I want to be. Let's go up to the eight iron. Okay, 153.3. So that is, this is my go-to 150 club. I see any type of 150 number, I'm pulling the eight iron anywhere around there. But when we step it up, we're gonna go into that 160 range, that's when the seven iron comes out. And I know I'm talking a lot about the T200s, but I do have a surprise that I added to the bag. It's not a surprise for any of you who saw the fitting. I would definitely encourage you to go back and check that video out if you haven't yet, because dive into each decision we made for each one of these, because another thing is with these heads, I was very close between the T200 and the T100S. We ended up doing a blind test to see which one worked out better, but ultimately it was the forgiveness of the T200s that worked for me. But we did introduce a lot more forgiveness in the four iron. You'll see that in a second. Let's hit the seven iron. All right, so I pulled that one just a little bit left. It wasn't the cleanest strike, but that's what I mean here, the forgiveness. I probably hit that in towards the heel just a bit. Still got close to my number. My total there was 160. I'd be looking for 165 out of this. So that's what I mean. On a miss hit, if you can still be predictably enough within that five yards, I'll take that. And we're not even that far off the center line for what felt like to me, not a very clean strike. That was the number one reason why I went to these irons. It's nice to know when I miss a little bit, I can still recover and it doesn't become a disaster. All right, dipping into the uh, longer irons here now. Anything with this six, I'm looking for something around that 170 number when I'm hitting my six. There you go. Right there. She rolls away on me here. So 174 carry, 178. Happy with all those numbers across the board. Really comfortable clubs to hit. All right, hit the five real quick and then we're gonna show you guys that four iron. Five iron, I'm looking for somewhere between 180, 190 range. All right, similarly, not a great swing. Again, pushed it a little bit left, but still close to my distance. 184, 
190. If I catch this perfectly clean, I might be able to get it 195. But again, there's that forgiveness, and that's how I hit that club. Now, moving on to that four iron I talked about. Oh, um, before I do, see what I got attached here? New little addition to the bag. These guys at uh, Ghost Towel sent us these. It's magnetic, pretty awesome, look. Magnetic, brilliant, okay. Anyway, so this is the four iron. It's a club that I needed more forgiveness with, and I also wanted to create some sort of, I don't wanna call it a gap, but some sort of transition between the T205 iron and the three hybrid. And what I found fit that perfectly, and when I say found, I mean Andy Inman in our fitting guided me towards this. So this is the U505 utility club in the four iron. And what we did is we paired that with the Tensai blue shaft. And this is what I mean about this bag having more of a cohesive feel through it than I've ever had before. Because what we ended up doing is finally matching up all the shafts that are graphite and all the shafts that are steel. So we've got those Project XLZ shafts in all of the irons, and now we've got the Tensai Blue graphite shafts in everything from the U505 up through the driver. But what I like about this, incredibly forgiving, and this is where we need that forgiveness, are, are in these irons, the four iron and, and upwards, if you go up in your bag. I happen to have a hybrid, we'll talk about that in a second. But so much easier to get the ball up in the air, tons more forgiveness across the face on miss hits. And this has just been an incredible club for those really long par threes and for those long approach shots because it, by being able to get the ball up in the air, I can stop it on the green a little bit better. They're not coming in as hot. So this is a club I'm usually looking to get about 200 yards out of. We'll hit it now on the Mevo Plus. All right, that's what I love about this club. So we got 195 carry, we rolled out to 204. So stop within 10 yards, even though that one was a little bit low. Again, just even a slight miss hit here, just caught a little bit thick on the mat and still got the distance I wanted out of it. That's what I like about this club. I also like having it in the bag when I need to punch it low, which I find is can be difficult sometimes with the hybrid. So I'll take this out of the club if I need to get under the trees or something like that. And that way it's versatile, not just as a full swing club. All right, now we get into the big boys in the bag. And one thing you'll notice is that these have the orange and black grips. I went with the Golf Pride grips all the way through. I just happened to regrip these before my brand new irons came in where I have the white and the black. So if there's anything that doesn't match in the bag, I like things that match. It's just those uh, those grips, but you know, get them regripped regularly enough. We'll get that sorted out. But anyway, the hybrid, and this is one, if you've been watching for a while, you know my story with hybrids. Originally didn't want anything to do with them. Kevin Sprecher fit me into the hybrid couple years ago and it just changed my game. You know, I had to just be open to it and I started hitting it and it just became so much easier to hit than the three iron I had. It was more versatile. I got the ball higher in the air. Again, able to hold greens from a longer distance. That's what I love so much about this club. Since then have upgraded to the TSI2, which gave me a little bit more dis distance and a little bit more forgiveness. So this is my club for anywhere from 210 to 220, 225. I'm pulling this club. Obviously, I could take a little bit off of it, grip down a little bit if I want to hit it a little bit less, or I can try to lay into it. I like that forgiveness, it allows me to do that. But anything more than about 220, 225, we're pulling the three wood. So let's hit the hybrid. Yeah, that one, that one I got all of. Let's put it that way. I got all of that completely clean. Nice little draw. 227 carry, that's pretty much, like I said, my max. We happen to be in perfect conditions here, hitting off of a mat. But if I need to take a club a little bit from the rough, stuff like that, this is my go-to club. Uh, and knowing that I can get some distance in, man, does it sound good when you get a hold of it. So this one, this one is one of my babies in the mix in there. And here comes another change we made, upgrading to the TSI. Two. So previously, like I said, if you watched some of the previous What's in the Bags, I had a mix of different generations of clubs. I'm now TSI2 from the hybrid through the driver. So A, there's a familiarity there that I like, but secondarily, again, the TSI2 series specifically for me, love the forgiveness, but one huge change we did, and this is a fitting we did with Kevin Sprecher recently. We saw that there was a, a real lack of usage, and he asked me why, I told him I just, 
don't feel comfortable hitting it. I'm not able to get the ball up in the air the way I'd like. Well, this one, I'm getting so much higher in the air. We ended up going with a little bit more loft. We changed the setting to a B2 setting. And what that did, and it's amazing how much of this is controlled by the mind, but Kevin had said just even looking down and seeing more loft was giving me a little bit more comfort with hitting the club. But I've said this countless times on the golf course, I love the height that I get out of this. It's, I've never gotten this much height out of a three wood before. And again, paired with that tensile blue shaft that you see again, there's that familiarity. So it just feels so similar to when I'm hitting my driver that I love and that hybrid that I love. Putting this in the mix, giving that familiarity, makes it one more club that's more accessible to me than it ever was before. So let's hit the three wood. Okay. So again, given the numbers, I hit that hybrid really flush. This one was a little bit outside of the center of the face. So that's why those yardages are similar. But anywhere from 225 out and up on those long par fives, I'm pulling this club. I'll hit it as far as 250 if I really catch it just right, but I'm happy with that number. A 240 total, that's this club. That's what I use it for. And it does get me closer on those long par fives. Okay, here she is, the big boy. I'm getting more distance than I've ever gotten before. Uh, and I think a large part of that comes from the forgiveness that I get from the TSI 2, which allows me to be more confident to really put a swing on it. And we've got it similarly set to that B2 setting with the Tensai Blue shaft again, and that same Golf Pride grip. Love the orange and black. All right, let's tee it up. Okay. Club head speed, a little bit lower for me. I'm usually, I'm after about 100 to 105 miles per hour. That's usually my target when hitting driver. Obviously being a little more warmed up, might be able to get there. But again, that transfer of energy that I get out of this thing is what's so incredible. So you look at these numbers, 98.6 mile per hour swing speed, but look at the smash factor, 1.5. I'm transferring all of that, and was the reason why we're getting 250 out of this. All right, and last but not least, before we dive into the pockets, is to talk about the putter. This is something I've talked about in the What's in the Bag plenty of times before because it's been a staple of my bag ever since getting fit for the Betnardi BB1 LN stands for long neck putter. I uh, have made some changes to it over the years. In fact, I shortened it up a little bit after doing a putting lesson with Kevin Sprecker. Allowed me to get my arms a little bit more free by shortening it up. But although, as you know, if you watch the channel, my putting does get hot and cold. It's been much better this year. And this is a club that I can consistently rely on. But I still believe the best bang for your buck when it comes to fittings, I, as you can see, I'm a strong advocate of getting fit through the bag, but start with that putter. This is one club that will last you a lifetime if it's properly fit. And I just absolutely love this club. I love the look of it, I love the feel of it, and it just gives me such a consistent roll and a consistent thing that as I work on my putting stroke, it just kind of comes right along for the ride and it just responds whenever I need it to. All right, let's dig into some of the pockets in the bag, show you some of the stuff that we've gotten there too. But I'll show you a couple of the highlights. Sometimes I just wanna fire something and lock my number in, and that's where I've absolutely been loving the Precision Pro R1 laser rangefinder. In fact, we recently did an entire review on this. Uh, it is, without a doubt, one of the smartest rangefinders out there on the market right now. Uh, not only does it give you that laser, it also gives you GPS. It will even, you can enter in your individual launch conditions like we get from the FlightScope Mevo today. I can enter those into the Precision Pro app and this will give me what's called a my slope number. So when I fire a pin, it'll tell me the exact distance, but then also knowing my individual launch characteristics with each club, it'll give me an adjusted number. It is that smart. And who hasn't forgotten their rangefinder somewhere before? It actually has a find my feature. It's that smart. So if you leave it behind, it'll notify you where it was last seen. And that ends up saving a lot of money on lost rangefinders. So I love having that in the bag as well. Just a couple more things to cover really quickly. Ball, 
playing the Titleist Pro V1. Uh, if you guys have seen some of our ball fittings before, I'm very close with the AVX because I love that soft feel. Just getting a little bit better trajectory and a little bit better spin from the Pro V1. So I went with that. The good news is in the brand new model, they made it a little bit softer feeling. It's closer to that AVX feel that I like. So that's where I've settled on now. But I like to do a ball fitting again every season or two just to make sure that I'm using the right ball for my swing at that time. And in this side pocket, one thing you know, you know about Mike and myself is we'll play rain or shine. So you gotta be prepared. So I like to carry a couple different gloves with me. Got the rain gloves. I've also been very big on the hyper flex. I also like the stay soft. I bounce between the two. Just love how soft these feel. I've got a really good connection with the club. So those are my go-tos. And then in here, speaking of weather, there's a couple things you just gotta have with you especially around these transitional se uh, seasons. One is the rain pants. Anybody who ever got caught in a bad rainstorm out there knows the value of these and staying dry. And this is my go-to jacket, the FootJoy Hydro Tour. In fact, we had a little bit of fun testing just how rainproof this was by throwing buckets of water on Mike. That was a fun day, but it's got this double collar that actually acts as a gutter and runs all of the rain away. So this thing is completely rainproof. Between the two of those, you throw those on while you're out there, you're gonna stay bone dry. That's what I love about it. And then in here, just an assortment of everything from Advil and teas. One thing I like is the big teas. I like to tee it high. That's just how I go. Uh, and then now, just today, what you gotta have, gotta have your hand sanitizer. <laughs> it's just, it's a must now everywhere we go. So I got a little bit of everything piecemealed in there together, but most importantly, like I said, want to do something different for you guys this year. We've always talked about the clubs and why we made the changes, but we haven't had a chance to really hit them and show you those stock yardages with every club in the bag. So I had a lot of fun doing that. If there's any changes, obviously we will guys will update you as the year rolls on. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. It does help us reach even bigger audiences so that we can do bigger and better things every year. So had a lot of fun with this. Hopefully we'll be back out on the course real soon. Until then, we'll see you guys soon.